Okay, people keep asking, when are you going to do the next video series? Well, we're going to do one starting today. Alright, how I work is, uh, I usually do a cowboy and then I'll do an Indian. Then I'll do another cowboy, then I'll do an Indian. Sometimes a break away from that, uh, that script, but generally no. So, we did the girl, Indian girl video series. Then I did another carving... Uh, Storms are coming, cowboy in the slicker. So now it's time to do another Indian. So what I thought like we'd do, being as we did the girls, we, this time we'll do a man, and this time we'll do a bust instead of a full figure. Okay? So I thought I'll, I'd also start this one off by showing you how I go about finding the figure I want to do and getting the research material that's going to help me do it. So here I am sitting at my computer. So let's just go to Google. Now remember, you don't really have to worry about how you phrase things anymore on a search engine because uh, these computers are sm smarter than most of us. So what I'm going to enter, enter here, I like to do Indians in robes. So I'm going to do Native American in a buffalo robe. I hit return. I got that there. Go to images because that's what I want. And then I start looking, all right? Now, I really like this guy here. I've looked him up before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take his head. Now, I have this program. You can see it up there in the left-hand corner there. It's called Snagit, and it allows me to come, come into these places and take just, you know, just, just a picture. Okay, that's what I want right there. That's all I want. So I'm going to take a picture of that. I'm going to save it in my uh, download folder. Like that. Now, being as... Uh, let's get rid of that. Now. Being as... That's got writing all over it. Let's just stay in this folder. And there he is again without the writing. So I'm going to click on that. Again, I'm going to bring down my Snagit application here. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to copy it. Just like that. And save it in my download folder. Okay, now I'm just going to check my download folder, and there they both are. All right? Now I'm going to open up a word processing... <laughs> application and here they are already okay I did this before save some time but I'll show you how I do that that Snagit program is really nice if you do a lot of uh, research so uh, what I want to do I just want to go to my download folder I want to click on that shift and click on that and copy them open up my page again and I want to paste them there so I'm going to move this guy over here, but to do that I'm going to have to go up here to picture tools, find where I want to put him, and I'm going to put him right there. Now this guy, although he's where I want him to be, I'm going to make sure he stays there. So I'm just going to put him right there in that corner, and then I'm going to enlarge him. And this guy here I'm going to enlarge. Okay, it's kind of grainy, but it's good enough. What I'm after with him is I really like that expression on his face. I mean, it is really nice. Got one eye partially closed here and one eye looking off in this direction over here. So there's a lot going on in this picture. You know he's getting his picture taken, but something's over there in that corner that he's interested in. And I don't know, he might not be approving of it by the looks of him. But anyway, this is what I want. So I'm going to print that picture. So I just go up here and I hit print and I say OK. And it prints. Now, one thing you want to remember when you use photographs on the internet, off the internet, is if they're copyrighted, don't do it. There's plenty of other photographs on there that aren't. These aren't, I'm sure these aren't copyrighted because these are old photographs. This is an ancient photograph. There's my, there's my page. Right there. 
So I, I feel I'm pretty free of taking these photographs. And anyway, I'm not going to be using all of them. On his head, I'm not going to use any of this hair around here. I'm going to use braids. So what I'm basically going to use off of this picture is just the folds and the blanket, the robe in this case, and that fan. And then I'm going to cut that figure off probably down about here. Okay? So although it's going to look similar to this picture, it's not going to be an exact copy of it. Now, if you're copying a picture off of a painting or something like that of a modern artist, well, you can use the idea of it, but don't, don't do a direct copy. It's just like my carvings. Some of my carvings, I'll show you how to make them, like this one here, how I'm going to make it. I'm telling you how I do it, and you're more than free to do the same thing that I do in one of these video series. But then take that other thing that I just finished, the cowboy and the yellow slicker. S storms are coming. That's my figure, okay? That's the same thing as a copyrighted painting. This, that was a copyrighted carving. You're not really allowed to use that. I know some of you will, but if I ever see it, you know, within my rights as an artist, I can sue you for using that, doing that. So you, you have to be careful. Even when uh, making a video, if I have music playing in the background, and it's copyrighted music, not allowed to be used, I'll get a notice from YouTube saying, you better take that out of there. And sometimes they say, you better take that out of there or you're not going to be able to post that video. So I take it out of there. So just be careful. Have respect for the other people's work. That's important. Okay? So anyway, now we have what we're looking for. I've got this printed out. I can take this down to the shop and uh, use it as a reference when I start doing the figure and that's what we're going to do right now I'm going to head on down the hill to the shop all right here we go here's a piece of that honey basswood. now this piece cost me when I bought it five dollars and fifty five cents which is a pretty good deal for the best basswood you can find now here's the sort of a geriatric pattern I use for my cowboys. I used it for this fellow here. And I'm going to use it for the Indian too, because like I said earlier, I don't want to carve my figure to where it's going to be a dinky little thing, to where someone can take it and put it on a knick-knack shelf. I just don't want to do that. This guy, he occupies some space. And that's what I want. So, I'm going to use this pattern here. It's two and three quarters inches wide by four and one half inches tall. And this piece of basswood here is, I think it's three inches. I think it's three, two and three quarters, not two and a half, but I say two and a half. So this is three, three by three. So I'll take my Kansas City building supply pencil, which my friend gave me a bunch of them, and they make a, make a nice dark line. So I'm going to line this thing up here, on here, and draw it. Just like that. So I need about that much neck. I don't need this back here, but I'd like to put a little bulb on it like that. Okay? And what I do here, just to show you, that's his nose, comes down here, and then that comes down. If I wanted a mustache, I, you know, if this was a cowboy and I wanted a mustache, it gives me lots of wood there to where I can make a mustache, just like I did on that fellow there. Okay. Now it's going to be too wide. Let me just draw this on here. Cross like that. That figure is going to be too wide. So once I get it over a cutout, I'll probably end up slabbing off you know, a piece on the side here to bring it down to the side 
size that I want, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is go over on my uh, big saw and just cut cut this square blank or rectangular blank off, okay? So I'll be back here in a minute. All right. Well, I went ahead and cut this thing out because I've shown you how I cut them out a hundred times before, so I didn't want to waste the time doing that. Anyway, what I did was I first I cut the piece out overall. Then, like I said earlier, I took took a slab off the side. Looks like that's about maybe a quarter of an inch. And generally, the first time I do this, you know, I'll drill a hole up there and keep this as a pattern. And then after that, I cut off the sides here. Just really remove some wood. Don't do that if you're not familiar with your equipment, you know, because I don't want you cutting yourself. Just if, if you're not familiar with equipment and you don't want to do it, just take it out a little extra time and take that off with your knife, okay? So in doing this, what happened is the thing that always happens no matter what kind of blade you buy, it's going to happen. It is the blade buster. Now these are Timberwolf blades, and I've been, I've had this blade in there for a long, long, long time. I've made a ton of carvings with this blade, and it finally gave up. So, you know, right there's where she busted. Didn't bust on the weld, busted on the metal. Now, what I'm going to do, there's life left in this blade, a lot of life. And I bought a little, <coughs> excuse me, bandsaw uh, soldering kit, bandsaw blade soldering kit. It cost me about 20 bucks, about the price of a blade. And uh, I can get about, oh, maybe two or three more busts on this after I repair it. And it probably won't bust again at the weld. Let's see where the weld is. Here. There's the weld right there. See there? So I can do that with that little uh, bandsaw repair kit. And the only reason I can't repair it more than that is because the blade gets too small to go on, <laughs> go on my bandsaw. Because each time I have to repair it, I have to, you know, uh, sand off the ends of the grind, well actually sand or grind off the ends of these to where you want to grind one side this way to give it kind of a, you know, chisel effect on the end. And then you want to do the same thing over here, but on the opposite side. And then you just take those two parts and you lay them over like that. And then you silver solder them back together again. You know, making sure they're uh, nice and join properly and that's what the little jig for the uh, bandsaw blade sharpener does for you and then you've got you basically almost not a brand new blade but one that's certainly serviceable for a few more times so just remember that you save yourself a lot of money over time so I'm just going to hang this one up and uh, when I get a moment I'm going to go pick my little jig up and I'm going to fix it in the meantime I'm going to do it over here Probably fall back off on the floor. So, where are we here? Okay. Suit up here. First thing I want to do is kind of ruffle out the neck area. I think I've told you before that I can't really see what's in a carving until I get rid of all this, these saw marks. Okay.
And you notice how when I'm carving, I've, uh, I keep this right up next to my chest. This thumb guard is going to protect that blade from hitting me. But having it up against my chest like this gives me a lot of control over that block rather than having it out here and you know it's bouncing around. And you want control to keep your keep from cutting yourself. Oops, too much there. There, now see this side's clean. More than this side over here. So I can, I, I, it's just, it might just be me, but I can see more here than I can over here. So what I'll continue to do is uh, get this side clean too. As soon as I see my knife bite into it like that, that means I'm going in the wrong direction. I need to turn that piece of wood around, or I'm going to end up with a big old chip out of there, which I definitely don't want. We want a nice rounded head. That's what has a lot of grain to it. It's close into the center of the tree, I guess.
these little bumps back here in the back, they're the the part that's going to uh, give me an anchor for the braids when I attach them. And why do I attach the blades separately? To give the piece strength. Because I don't want it breaking. So there we go. We got we got the piece cleaned up. Ready for some details. which will come along in the next video. So that's going to do it for this one. And we'll pick this one up in the next one. So until then, I'll talk to you later.